So one little Nomadton update. Um, the move of the yurt has started. And so today we had one, two, three, four, four like something between four and six people in between. Um, so unlike before, I like last time I did not do this work, right? Like flattening the ground. I just, because my idea was having this um, mattress where the yurt is standing on that it will even out because it's filled with the with the uh, leka, these uh, inflated clay balls. So I thought that the leka will just nicely even out the ground and it does. The top surface is quite clear, but you can see the yurt itself is not quite even. So now we did this effort and flattened this a bit. And also that will have the advantage that the mattress where the yurt is standing on now, where the yurt floor is laying on. This mattress, because it's evening out the ground and the ground is not even, the mattress has uh, a smaller diameter, slightly smaller diameter than the yurt, which should be the other way around. So for that reason, it's actually good to make this little extra step. And it's good to take down the yurt once in a while anyway, because it's a nomadic structure. It's made to be taken down and put up easily often and usually yurts, I think, to my understanding, they're just on the earth floor, which has so many advantages because you can just mess around. You don't need to use a broom or something much to, like, a compacted sand floor is quite a good floor and it's not cold. So sand floor is actually not a bad floor and then having mats of uh, straw kind of thing on it and then um, carpets also laying on that. Not straw mats, but uh, what is risu? Um, twigs, right? Twig mattresses. So anyhow, um, interesting to see where this is going, but now the idea is to get the patya, this mattress back, move it over here and take the leka that is inside. Um, oh, my hand is getting... So taking the mattress, uh, the, the, the lecker, the inflated clay balls that are inside the mattress, taking those and filling them in, I think they're 40 or 60 liter bags. So I got some, I don't know, plenty, plenty, like almost 100 or something of bags. They are like 60 or 80 liters and used to transport barley or hop or something uh, from a brewery, a local brewery, which I can really recommend. And so the local brewery um, donated these bags and when the inflated clay will be in those bags, it's easier to move it around. And then there, I will just use some loose clay in between these bags to fill up um, gaps. So that's the idea. And there's some other ideas about the yurt. Like the idea was to yurt because I noticed that it's kind of too big too big at least to move around with a bicycle and when i'm asking myself the question what is enough i know from experience that for being warm dry and safe in the subarctic enough is what fits in a backpack so i don't want to go there still the yurt in itself as a shelter for myself is is far too much and I've decided that it's, I just put it into the communal use, uh, use it when my kid is over and it can be used as a guest room, communal kitchen, uh, living room, uh, library, crafting, sitting together in the winter. And yeah, so that's the idea of what will happen with the yurt. So the yurt will be having a bit of a, getting another purpose or additional purpose. I do not call it really my home, um, even though I feel home there. Uh, still, in my mind, I'm somewhere in the backpack, bicycle, transportable shelter approach. And also, in the long term, building something more permanent. The yurt is not really a good permanent shelter if you're staying in one place. So if moving is not part of the, uh, I don't know, approach this frequent moving around then it's good to 
build something more permanent from local and recycled, like local natural and recycled materials, which is plenty available also. So, and I'm currently looking into how do you build turf cabins and little lock shelters and all these kind of things. The thing with the yurt is I cannot replace the fabric myself. So in, you know, if in 15, 20 years or something, I would need a new fabric. I don't know how good, it depends how long care or good care I take and what is the exposure to the elements, what is the wear. Then uh, it's, uh, this is Koo. Koo is a doggy doggy dog. Koo means moon. Anyhow, so is there anything else? Yeah, so oh, and why moving the yurt? Um, also, why not just take it down and put it up to do the maintenance and adjustments? Moving it also um, because then there is more space kind of in the town center of this resilience hub, and we can use that space for I don't know, having a fireplace or something to sit around and eat together, cook together, craft together, whatever is part of the life. So <laughs> like a communal space, anyhow. Yeah, I think that was a short update from the Nomad Town. Um, some updates also regarding the local um, yeah, biodiversity. Uh, very happy that two nights ago a moose was sleeping on the edge of the field here, or of the edge of the grass, which was the case two years ago when I came here. And now it's, yeah, then they were not here last year using this space, and now at least one used the space two nights ago. And it's very nice. I think the ants were happy. The ants have a deal, I think, with the moose. Moose at least like to sleep where there are lots of ants in the area. And I guess the ants are cleaning the moose of parasites, so-called. Well, probably it's a thing. Yeah, so cleaning the moose. And happy about this. Then the ants are really active, just not here in this middle area where people are. There's the ant area and there's the people area. And in the people area, there's very little ants. And the ants take care that, I guess they take care. It's at least my impression we have next to no ticks here. Uh, like I think I've seen two ticks here in the last years. And I think that's really it now. Oh, and the mosquitoes are back, right? So celebrating this, mosquitoes are back. Uh, still taking something, getting used to remembering like, ah, yeah, yeah, in the beginning they might itch and uh, the, the bites will get swollen. Just now it's in the moment a bit harder to ignore them, but it's totally not impossible, not, not anything difficult. And now it's easy to get used to them and just forget about them for the rest of the year. Thank you for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing, sharing, commenting and take good care. Bye bye.